Okay, to turn on your ultrasonic unit, there is a button in the back. It's a flip switch on most units. I'm going to turn it on. Here is the power and on this unit, the power and water dial. I'm using the slim line today, so I can use it on low to medium speed. So I'm going to just turn it a little bit. And in order to load your ultrasonic tip appropriately, you need to first fill the, ultra, the ultrasonic handle. So I'm pushing the, my button on the floor to fill the, ultra, the ultrasonic hand unit up. There you go, you can get a nice little bubble on the top. I like to turn on my high speed evacuator when I place the ultrasonic tip in the handle to catch the extra water, like so. So I'm not making a huge mess. And then you're going to settle the ultrasonic handle in, the ultrasonic tip in the handle. All right, what you're looking for to know that your ultrasonic is at the right amount of water is you're looking for a fine mist and a drip. So I'm just going to engage the foot pedal over my high speed. And as you can see, that's just one sh sharp stream of water. So I'm going to adjust my dial and wait for a mist and a drip. Still a little much. A mist and a drip. There's a nice mist and a drip. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to show that again. The mist and the drip. For basic ultrasonic instrumentation, remember that the lateral sides of the ultrasonic are the most effective. So here and here. Also remember that the most effective part of the instrument are the last three millimeters of the instrument itself. I'm going to show you both curette and probe style how to move from one tooth to another and be effective using the ultrasonic. The get ready zone on the lateral side of my ultrasonic and move back. I'm using probe style here as I'm going apical and I'm using multi-directional strokes and watch as I come towards the medial. I am turning that instrument into a curette. Now look, I'm not using the back. I'm not turning it like this. I'm making sure I bring this down so it stays on the lateral side of the instrument. Now, in order to be effective in calculus removal, you are tapping that piece of calculus from the crown area to the apex. So you're tapping the, the top of it, if that makes sense. And curette style towards the back, using those lateral sides. I'm going to show you what we like to call the Shelley sequence, which means when you're in the interproximal space, you just bounce down towards the contact and then up towards the distal of the other tooth. So what I mean by the Shelley sequence is you're coming on the mesial of one tooth, staying in a proximal, and then going to the distal of the other tooth without moving your instrument out. And you go from probe style to curette style using the lateral side. You do not want to do this. This is something that I see often. If you come from the mesial, like this. This is not as effective. See that? You want to be down like this on the lateral side, not the back of the instrument. I also see this a lot. Coming to the distal, you're on the face of the instrument. You're not being as effective as if you were to do it this way. And even better, twist, twist, twitch it and go to the other side. Then close on out. Remember your multi-directional strokes, up and down, side to side, making sure that you are being uh, thorough in your calculus removal. In order to be effective with your ultrasonic tip, you want to remember that the last few millimeters is what is the most effective part of the instrument. Also the lateral sides. So you want this side and this side. Not to say that the back and the face aren't effective in any way, shape, or form, but they're the least effective. So what you want to do is you're coming across the mesial of a tooth. You want to make sure that you're adapting those lateral sides into a curette formation instead of just bringing that across onto the back 
or on the distal onto the face. This is in this is incorrect. See, incorrect. This is correct. Okay, you've got this the side of the instrument. Also, with the ultrasonic, you want to make sure that you're not putting the tip towards the tooth, as you may damage the tooth itself, and it makes a horrible sound. So make sure that you're using those lateral sides, multi-directional, tapping up onto that on, onto those calculus deposits, making sure that you're not um, over adapting or under adapting by using the back or the face.